Now, the film title showed Fairview Beltline, but um, actually we're going to have a trip on the observation cars, and we see the observation car sitting at the starting point at Camby and Hastings alongside the province building, and uh, the terminus which was shared with the Oak Street cars. The observation cars were rather unique. They were uh, a sort of a toast rack type design, as you can see in the picture, and were a real feature in Vancouver for many, many years. Um, they not only provided a sightseeing trip, but there was also an entertainment feature to the cars. Um, there were two personality conductors uh, who were well known in the city at the time. One was Teddy Lyons, who was um, uh, actually a real comedian and kept the passengers entertained with his jokes and comedy. And then the other conductor was Dick Gardner. And Dick was an amateur music or a magician, and he could actually do sleight of hand tricks and uh, really confound the passengers with these these various tricks. Now the um, cars made a big loop. Um, and ran south on Granville Street um, and here we are crossing um, the bridge uh, this is the Camby Bridge actually and operated um, via Granville 41st Avenue uh, Dunbar and Broadway Incidentally, there was a very old intercity type bus there. It looked like a Fitzjohn bus crossing Camby Bridge. Here we are. Here's the observation car heading south on Camby, followed by one of the new Canadian car Brill trolley coaches, which, of course, were the um, vehicles that replaced the majority of the streetcar lines in Vancouver. Also in that last picture was a Pacific Stage Lines twin coach Fagel bus. And uh, this picture shows the Camby trolley coach operating, so uh, this was taken after that first uh, trolley coach conversion. We're heading west on Broadway now. And here's a scene taken from the uh, seats. Um, the seats were staggered so that uh, people had a good view, a good forward-facing view. That's Dick Gardner uh, acting as conductor on this particular trip. Dick was not only a mag magician, he was a musician and a comedian, and uh, both he and Teddy Lyons were ideally suited to, to this type of um, service. Now, the car has gone all the way along West Broadway and is now on Dunbar, coming up the Dunbar Hill uh, around 14th Avenue, the Dunbar Diversion, and uh, is going to make a turn onto 16th Avenue, and then we'll go on Dunbar southbound until it reaches 41st Avenue. On these trips, um, the conductors had arranged with local people to um, have their children come out and sing songs and do little dances on the street. And the car would stop, the observation car would stop and while the children would perform. And it was uh, really old-time homespun entertainment, I guess. Uh, not very sophisticated, but it certainly was uh, well regarded in its day. Uh, the car is now heading south on Dunbar. And continuing south on Dunbar. These uh, Dunbar, the Dunbar lines were served by um, two-man cars. Now here's some of the entertainment. We have a little girl playing an accordion. Um, the streetcar approaching is one of the, what were called the Hastings East Steel Cars. 
These are built by a Canadian Car and Foundry in about 1926. Um, the car in the background is one of the Brill streetcars. We're now turning the corner onto 41st Avenue at Dunbar. And then the car is going to Y at this point. Now the observation car routing was altered during the diminishing years of street railway service and uh, this was taken later on when uh, the carousel line was not available for service but at one time they used to make a big one-way loop in this case they've run both ways on Dunbar so my earlier comment on the routing was the one that was in effect prior to the time these pictures were taken <clears throat> now we're again heading north on Dunbar we've come to 16th Avenue the diversion and then again we'll head uh, north on Dunbar down towards uh, Broadway There were two observation cars, number 123 and 124, and then uh, in the early years they were backed up by another car, number 29, which was really a city street car that had the top removed from the window uh, railing upwards. And this car uh, helped out in busy times when three cars were needed. However, when the war came along, there was such a demand for ridership uh, on the system that number 29 was put into the kits line of shops and rebuilt into a conventional streetcar and served uh, until the end of street railway service and regular passenger service. We've now crossed the um, Granville Bridge and we're coming up to Pacific and Granville and uh, making the S turn to go north on Granville, um, north of Pacific. Of course, this has all radically changed now with the new Granville Bridge, and it's hard to identify these scenes and relate them to the present-day situation. This is coming up to Davy and Granville. There's one of the PCC cars uh, coming southbound on the Kitsilina line. There were 36 PCC cars on the Vancouver system. Um, the car, the observation car now is just turning off Granville onto Hastings Street and in this scene is approaching Victory Square which is the completion of the, the run and the passengers are disembarking here and then the observation car will run um, deadhead to Pryor Barnes and then resume another trip at a later time. Uh, again a Fagel, Twin Coach Fagel a gas bus is showing up there and of course is indicating the shape of things to come as the system will gradually be converted and the Fagel gas buses uh, served as an interim measure when the lines were being stripped of trolley overhead and were put in service until the trolley coach overhead could be put in place. So they served on many of the lines on an interim basis. And so the observation car in this case looks to be heading back onto Canby Street and ready for another trip.